Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Trophy Net the Babbling Belgian, and welcome back to Trum Breaker The Witcher Tales for what might be the final episode. I know I've said that a few times now, but I'm pretty sure that this will be the last episode because I just got the trophy for reading all the Spy Master letters. Uh, although this is one as well, so I don't know how that works. Master Nerf Guardians, a time when you could demand, require, and expect has come to an end. My payment is non-negotiable, not the amount nor the currency. Your florins are now worth less than Sidarian coppers. I give you until tomorrow. After that, safe passage to the border will no longer be possible due to Queen Neve's approach from the south. X. Okay, so that's from a smuggler then. Interesting. And this is Harmelin. Well, then all of you, treat yourself to our new view. For a better future through and through. <laughs> so these guys are rebuilding and singing at the same time. First foundations hoist the walls, then we revel in its halls. Everyone's doing their part to rebuild the homeland. First foundations hoist the walls. Okay, so there we go. Bit of a nice song, but it doesn't seem like there's any way to pass through the buildings. In between the buildings. So we just Pass that, which means that we're already at the camp, I think. Yeah, so you can't do anything over there. So I think I'm going to use the scouts one last time because this is where the map actually ends as well. So let's use the scouts one more time. All areas revealed. So yeah, that's basically it. I think we found everything. Let's end this. It would be an honor to fight at your side, Majesty. Side by side. We'll kick those black clads across the Yoruba. Long live Eden! Long live Rivia! Long live Hyrule! And Lyria! Hyrule? Well, that was a Zelda reference. It'd be an honor to fight at your side. Okay. Music's changed to the Eden music again. The dramatic Eden music. And then we're at Damavin's tent. There we go. Let's have a little chat at that. The Lyrian Corps neared Aldersburg. Deja vu. And it could not have been on a more idyllic day. The sun shone, birds sang, trees rustled in a light breeze. But Meave saw it as she had at the war's start. Walls illumined by a fire's glow. The cries of fleeing civilians. The stench of burning flesh. As on that day, Aldersburg was under siege. At this time, Eden's flags fluttered in the field, while Nilfgaard's tattered sons crowned the fort's towers. The Queen found Demoven's tent without difficulty. Made of sheets of silk edged with silver thread, it positively shone. Seems the realm's restored to a virtuous path, muttered Meave. Aha! There she is! Queen Meave! Saviour of the North! The Sun Slayer! Mockery I don't appreciate. I wouldn't dare. Not my words, those. You've been painted thus in song. Master Dandelion himself wrote a ballad. The Battle for the Bridge. If you take the bard at his word, you're as fierce with a blade as any witcher. Hm. Is that jealousy I hear? To be perfectly honest, Meave, it is. For I hadn't the pluck, nor resolve. And when all the North Tucktail went to shite, you alone stepped up and bared your fangs. Let it be a lesson for the future to us all. You called out the future. Tell me, how's your son? Baldwin. Ah, oh, growing like a weed he is. And the spitting image of his old man. Good news all, especially given the mother's profession. She's now Countess Demaretta of Gullet, the Lady of the Court. Ooh, your lawful wife must be thrilled. Hard to say in truth. I've not seen her in some time. Duty keeps me away, you understand. Mm. You work hard, I'm certain. Many a night, too. <laughs> you might say so indeed. But enough about me. As we're chirping away like two gossips in the field, do tell me. What a villain. He perished in the assault on Rivia Castle. Ah. Oh my. Fighting for which side? The right one. Demavend, the wound is fresh, the pain immense. I'd rather we not speak of it. A lesson for the future. 
What do you mean? My dear, this war won't change a bloody thing, you know. Nilfgaard will be Nilfgaard, the North, the North. We'll sign a truce, the Blackclads will turn tail towards home, but the old borders don't satisfy us. I'm perfectly satisfied with them, thank you. And I just wish other folk would respect them too. You're one hell of a warrior, but you're no strategist at all. Your perspective, you've got to broaden it. Nilfgaard, we cannot allow it to regain strength and spirit, else we'll face another invasion within a decade or two. Measures are required. Preventive, preemptive, whatever the learned call it. Build an army, a vast one, wait in ambush, and when they least expect it, break their bloody spine. Just think, if we were to join forces... Enough. I don't wish to hear it. Won't even entertain the thought. I'll help you take Aldersburg, but then I'll go home, where, God's willing, I'll live to a ripe old age. As you wish. We can mount the assault at any time, but... But? My scouts report a small Nilfgaardian force approaching from the south. They've stayed off the roads, moved only under the cover of night, escorting someone. Who? I've no notion. Could be a mage. Devilishly unpredictable, that lot. Could wreak havoc in our ranks. Either way, before we rush at the walls, we must make certain they don't reach Aldersburg at all. I shall see to it. Are you sure? You've just arrived. Must be weary after the long journey. An understatement if I ever heard one. But I wish all this to be over, quickly. Neve set out after the Nilfgaardians immediately, a cavalry escort in tow. Her unmatched scouts, who had led the army through the mountains of Mahakam and Angren swamps, quickly found the enemy's trail. This way, Your Grace! It's not far now! That very same day, Meave's force caught up to the mysterious black-clad unit. Lyrian riders surrounded the foe, forcing the Nilfgaardians to halt. All fell so quiet, the creaking of taut Lyrian bowstrings could be discerned. The common tongue. Which of you knows it? I do, Your Majesty. Caldwin. You also know who you deal with, I see. What is your name? Caldwin, your majesty. At last. An Nilfgaardian name I can pronounce. So, Caldwin. It seems this war will reach its end in two days' time at the most. It would be silly to die today, wouldn't you agree? It would, my lady. Precisely. I've spilled enough blood. I've lost the appetite for more. So, provided you don't give me a good reason to kill you, you'll walk away with your lives. Now tell me. You carry something for General Epdahi. What is it? A letter. Urgent to the point of insanity, it must be. Who wrote it? The dear Madame Epdahi? No, Your Majesty. The Emperor. My, my. A letter from Amir himself. You must be an important person. A noble, or... Hmm. Yet your uniform is simple, with no discernible distinctions. Who are you truly, Coldwin? A spy? A simple messenger, your majesty. Hmm. Why do I have the feeling that he might be Abdahi's son? Abdahi's son. Don't lie. I know messengers, how they travel. Alone, armorless, atop a swift steed. You're escorted by cavalry of the heavy sort. For I often carry orders the recipients don't wish to perform, thus the escort. Give me the letter. I've sworn to deliver it to General Epdahi, or to die in the quest to do so. Oh, very well. My translator shall read this letter, then return it to you. You shall break no vow, and who knows? You might even survive. And if I refuse? Guess. So be it. I accept your offer. Meave's translator cracked the seal and read. And as he read, his eyes grew wide as saucers. Then, he whispered in the Queen's ear. Truly. And you're certain you're not mistaken. The wonders of this world. Coldwin, consider this your lucky day. I allow you to complete your mission with one proviso. And that is? 
that when you hand him the letter, you will give the general my regards. As Caldwin and Escort set off towards Aldersburg, Valyrian soldiers looked at their queen with disbelief. To leave a Nilf guardian to fulfill a secretive task. Meave failed to stifle a rather mean laugh. They'll understand tomorrow, she thought. General Epdahi had prefaced Lyria's and Rivia's invasion with a series of arrogant demands. The Nilfgaardian had been impudent, as he had felt sure he'd achieve a quick and decisive victory. Yet several months on, he too received an ultimatum. One signed by Emperor Emir Var Emreis himself. The missive was concise and left no room for interpretation. With General Epdahi dead, the Nilfgaardian army descended into chaos. The kings of the north, united, took advantage and struck at the foe. Their victory was complete. The Nordling forces cheered their commanders and monarchs, but for none so vehemently as the one queen among them. Many dream of achieving the impossible. Meave had done it. Through wit, determination and boldness, she had thwarted the Nilfgaardian invasion. The queen would rule for many more years. Stern, yet ever just. Ah! So alas saved the North from the Black Clans. That is one way to put it. Well, I'll be damned. And a chap. She find herself one in the end? Leave it be. Bloke's been spinning the tail all night. The story's done. Time we got some shut eye. Yes. Particularly as we've got. Ha 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 ha. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. Phew. Throat must be pastures old leather after all that. <laughs> Except, uh, I'm itching to know what happened to the lot of them. Raynard, Gascon. Ah, oh, very well. Whom shall we start with? Villain. I knew the storyteller had to have a been a tool an important in hands. character. Most, if not all, had seen him thus. Yet in the end, he proved his worth soundly. Though he'd started the war a traitor, he perished in the fray, a hero, and would be remembered as such. Having settled in Rivia, Gascon embarked on a life worthy of his noble origins. In doublet and ruff, he looked to his ample fields and livestock in daytime, attended banquets and feasts come the eve. And then one night, he grabbed his bow and quiver, saddled his favorite mount, and disappeared without a trace. As news of the Nordling victory filtered south, Nilfgaard's inhabitants greeted it with disbelief. Returning Imperial soldiers told stories of Lyria's cruel queen, who murdered prisoners and sullied sacred laws. They referred to her as Gveldet, the bloodthirsty one. With the advent of peace, tensions waned. Lyria's and Rivia's disparate races seemed to live harmoniously, side by side. The Queen pressed for new laws aimed at curbing oppression. They were a step towards more enlightened rule, yet sadly were habitually broken. And Meave? As I said, she ruled with an iron hand, not fist. Ever alone, ever strong, dousing dissent with commanding gestures. She was beloved, I've no doubt. Yet her subjects always breathed easier when her gaze moved on from them to someone else. And now, if you'd allow me... Of course. Leave him be, lads. Let him get some rest. Till the time comes for the next tale. That was awesome. It's based on the prose of Andrzej Sapkowski. I don't know how to pronounce his first name. It's there's a lot of letters there, and uh, that's, this was amazing. So, just to explain a little bit, I freaked out about the storyteller's identity, because um, if you've read the books, you know who that is. Um, the three black birds on his chest actually give it away. Um, I don't know if you remember, at the very beginning of this series, when we first met Egg, he told us a story about how he got 
uh, injured by a golden dragon. Well, the story about Egg and the golden dragon is one I'm gonna tell you guys soon. I have an episode of something new in the works and I'll uh, let you guys know when that's ready. But in short, the storyteller's name is Borch Tree Jack Dawes. Um, and he's a character from that very same story of Egg in the books, the very same short story. And Borch Tree Jack Dawes is actually none other than that same golden dragon. So golden dragons have the ability to transform into humans and Borch Tree Jack Dawes is actually his human form. The human form of the golden dragon villain Trettenmert. And that was a really cool detail. Because of course, um, Bortree Jack Dawes is a bit of a, a rogue. The human form is a bit of a rogue, so it would make sense that he gets captured at some point by those mercenaries. And, well, he could easily escape, because if he just transforms into a dragon, he's out of there and nobody would be the wiser if he did it when nobody was watching. So, that is really cool. So, yeah. We have been listening to the voice of a dragon this entire time, which it's cool. It's just really, really cool. So with that, we've arrived at the end of the story, the end of the story of Queen Meave, which I must say, and had a, I've, I'm almost done rereading the books, and they've most of the stories are just their own. CD Projekt Red did an amazing job. Um, they've used what little there was in the books about Meave's part of the campaign against Nilfgaard and went with it. They just did an amazing job of telling the stories based on the facts that were there and just worked from there and just built an amazing, amazing storyline, amazing characters because most of them are actually new. Uh, I think the few characters that were already there were Meave, uh, Reynard is already was all, also in the books, Black Rayla, um, Bruver of course, and well, the, most of the leaders are, are 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 obviously the same, but most of them, yeah, most of them are new creations. Um, they of course hand. Well, I mean, I've I've talked about any character we've come across, whether they're from the books or not, so you have an idea about that, but. Yeah, I'm really impressed with what they did here. It's a very unique game. The 2D style in the overworld combined with the storytelling that looks pretty dry, but it's just interspersed enough with music, the amazing music and sound effects. Because that was also something that was really cool. The sound effects were really a good uh, guideline for the rest of the stories. So when they were being told by the amazing voice of the storyteller of Porch, Tree Jack Dawes. And yeah, I really liked what they did with all of that. Even just doing the battles with cards, most of the time it served the purpose. There might have been a bit too many of those normal battles that were dragging along a bit too much, especially in the uh, the swamp level. But overall, this was an amazing game. Um, yeah. Nothing more to say about that. That was that was amazingly well done. So great on you, CD Projekt Red. Uh, for the guys that don't know, I've become also an official grant partner. So I've come into contact with a few of the developers, uh, which is also nice. Um, and yeah, I must say, thank you, CD Projekt Red, for this amazing story and amazing experience. And uh, what's next for the channel? I don't really have a cue clue. I think by now I must have already put a video on the channel asking you guys what you want me to play next for our bigger series. So the next one is supposed to be another RPG but I'm still hesitating whether it should be something like Skyrim, Dragon Age Inquisition, Kingdom Hearts, stuff like that. I want to have something that is long enough for us to have two episodes a week but still doable. Uh, I'm not sure what it will be just yet. I'm looking for you, uh, for you guys, for your opinion to make that decision. So if you have a suggestion or a preference, let me know in the comment section and we'll, uh, we'll go from there. So thank you guys enormously for watching with this amazing music back in the background. And I hope to see you guys in the next series, whatever it will be. And thank you guys for enjoying the series of Thronebreaker, The Witcher Tales. Thanks again for watching and see you guys next time.
Goodbye. And in case you're wondering why this is still going, I mean, it's kind of obvious, right? I did this for Spider-Man as well. Just let the credits keep going. Because, of course, these are the people that made this the amazing game that it is. Every single one of them. So, there we have it. The amazing people that made this game what it is today. The amazing experience. Uh, it is right now, especially since it's apparently translated in a, quite a few, I think it's six or seven languages, which uh, it has been uh, completely localized in, so including the voiceovers, which is which is great. Um, and it's, it's, it hurts a bit what's happening in the game industry lately. So we have reports on the one hand of people being overworked, so they're just being almost abused by the, these development companies uh, and publishing companies, which is horrible because um, people that, that follow my channel know that I was close to actually getting a job into the gaming industry and I chose a different path at the beginning of my career. So now I'm more into uh, mobile development companies and stuff like that. Nothing specific, particularly game development uh, anymore. But still, it's something that I, I, I learned at school. It's my my uh, my degree is in game development, so I, I know what I'm talking about, kind of. I did my internship at a mobile game company, so it was kind of close. But still, the, the way these companies treat some of their uh, employees is horrible. Especially those people that more recently it comes. It has come to light that some of the people that worked on these games for years on end were excluded from the credits because they uh, they left the company a few weeks or months before it was released, which is of course bullshit. Or even for remakes, I think recently there was a story about Exceed removing uh, people from the remade versions of their games uh, from yeah the original list of people that worked on it which is which is horrible I mean you can't do that well obviously they can but they shouldn't do that those people worked on that it's their work they should be credited for what they did uh, but yeah I felt like this this had to be said even if it's just in a, a happy let's play series like this one where we try to well just play the game and enjoy it for what it is uh, we can't forget about the people that actually made this work and these are all of them. So if you're still here, because I'm, I'm assuming that most of the people actually just skipped through and didn't even listen to this anymore. If you're still listening, let me know in the comment section because I'm really interested in uh, how far people tend to come in these uh, episodes. But uh, yeah, I feel like that needed to be said. But 
enough with the heavy handed stuff. Uh, if there's anything after these credits, you'll see that as well. Um, but I'm just gonna let this run because these people deserve for their names to be shown, even if it's just in a stupid Let's Play series like this one. Um, calling it stupid, I know I, I, if you enjoy it, all the better. But I know it, not a lot of people actually watch these. Um, I'm realistic like that. But I hope you guys enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it. I still really enjoy doing this channel with uh, everything that comes with it. Uh, even though, of course, not a lot of people watch this. But uh, yeah. I like, I like also talking to you guys. I don't, I don't stream too often. Uh, because just I, I like the format as it is. It's also the reason why I do YouTube and not streaming. Because streaming, I can't do a regular schedule. I have too much work with my, uh, my full-time job. Uh, with my fiancé. I've asked her to marry me. Which is something you might not have known about me just yet. But uh, yeah, I have a lot of responsibilities there in my job. I have a lot of responsibilities with her, of course. And my fiancé, I don't want to neglect my duties there as well. So... Uh, that's why I don't stream so often. I do if I have the chance, but I can't um, just make a promise about when I'll be streaming and if I'll do it regularly on a specific day, I, I just can't. Um, aside from that, of course, I have my friends as well. So every Thursday I do stream, but it's in, in, uh, in Dutch with my friends, which is something you might like. I'll maybe even link the channel that we stream that on. It's called Game Night. Game Night in, in Flams, which is our language, Flemish. It's not exactly uh, Dutch per se, but it has a bit of a dialect in there. But uh, if you're interested in that, you can check out that channel. But uh, I usually don't plug that in here. But I feel like if, we're, if you're wa still watching and listening to this, you're probably the most dedicated fans that I have. Because otherwise you would have quit out of this video a long time before this. And, uh, well, I do call myself the babbling Belgian, so it would be uh, weird for me to not babble this credit list full of me babbling. But, yeah, we talked about the game, we talked about the situation in the game industry, and we talked about even my freaking schedule, so... I'm starting to run out of oh, Jira administrator. I use Jira as well. That is actually funny. But um, I'm starting to run out of things to talk about. So uh, even though I would really love to babble this full, I don't think I would find anything more useful to say. Um, other than, yeah, I'd like to thank you. You guys in specific. You guys specifically. The guys that are still watching. The people that are still watching. Because I, I say guys a lot, but I mean, I, I use that for everybody. Uh, if there are women watching but um yeah really really thank you to you guys specifically because you guys are the most dedicated fans you're still watching this you were still curious if i had anything else to say and i really appreciate you guys for that so thank you thank you thank you and please enjoy the rest of the credits supported by this amazing music because we just had gascon steam that's probably my favorite piece of music in this game and I'm still talking. That's probably my favorite piece of music in this game. Although there were a really, really... Most of the teams, most of the specific teams for specific story battles were really, really good. And yeah, kudos to those guys specifically. The guys of the music department. But, as you can see, accounting, these guys are important as well. Otherwise, the money wouldn't be correctly. The people wouldn't be... The, those developers wouldn't be paid at the correct times. So all those people, very important as well. Taxes, employment and payroll, there we go. The people that pay the rest of the employees, also very important people. But there we go. Enjoy the rest of the credits and maybe I'll see you guys at the end of the credits if there's anything left there. Because we might have had a happy ending for Meev, um, which is actually, we never talked about that. It actually fits the books completely. So in the books it is mentioned that Ardal Abdahi actually dies from illness. So, uh, but the, I think at that point it's actually, uh, how should I put this? It, it's actually described from the Nilf Guardian's point of view. So they talk about him being poisoned with his food. He dies of illness. 
because of poisonous food and they blame the northern realms for that but of course it makes a lot more sense that Emir Far Amri is just forces Abdahi to commit suicide because of the things he has done. Uh, not just in this game, because of course we talked about that before. Abdahi, together with a, a few other Nilfgaardian families, want to overthrow Emir and actually put in a democracy, which is something that a lot of the characters in the books actually laugh at him for. But uh, there we go, more interest, more amazing music. This is great! I'm gonna stop talking. I think I said everything I wanted to say. So Abdahi actually dies in the books as well before anything really happens. He just dies of an illness. And uh, yeah, enjoy the music and the end of the credits. And see you guys in any next video where this will go further in. So uh, thank you guys and see ya. I'm gonna stop talking. Goodbye. Aha, we do end with a campaign summary. So congratulations, victory is yours. The Nilfgaardian Empire has been defeated and driven from the Northern Realms. Total time spent 40 hours. We spent 40 hours on this bad boy. And it's actually more because I replayed the first chapter on speed. So I just checked the recording and I think I, I did it in half the time we did it originally. It's 57 quests, 36 standard battles. 36 puzzles, which must have been everything because they're equal for some reason. So 40 out of 42 chests. So we missed two chests and I think I know where. We missed one at the very beginning and then one in the swamps of Angren. So I know where to find those. And then all crates found 437. 27 recruits constructed. That seems a bit low. And 23 shrines illuminated. But I feel like the recruits should be a lot higher. And that's it. We can only load a game now. We can start a new game, but we cannot continue anymore. So thank you guys enormously for watching and uh, see you in the future. Goodbye.